Hey class, and we're gonna try something different here. Uh, we're gonna do some artwork. I feel that drawing stuff out is a great way to learn it. So I'm gonna show you an activity that we normally do if we're in school and you guys get to like participate in a little anatomy hopscotch. So what I'm doing here is this is taking me probably 15 to 20 minutes of real time. I'm drawing out the skin and a bunch of the structures that are found in the skin. This is what I want you to do. Okay, everybody, so now we have the skin. And let's go ahead and take a look at the structures that are detailed here. Up on top, we've got the epidermis. And then down below, we've got the dermis. And you can see a number of structures are embedded in the dermis here. And we're going to be going over all of those after we first take a look at the epidermis. If you'll recall, the epidermis has five distinctive layers, the stratum corneum, the stratum lucidum, the stratum granulosum, the stratum spinosum, and the stratum basali. The stratum corneum is basically a layer of keratin protein. It's all dead cells. The stratum lucidum, it, the cells are mostly dead. Uh, they've lost their nuclei and they're just basically finishing being compressed into the cells of the stratum corneum. The stratum granulosum is where keratin is mostly produced. Uh, these cells will migrate upward into the stratum lucidum. The stratum spinosum is where the cells are actively growing and getting larger and they will be pushed upwards into the stratum granulosum where they make keratin. And the bottom layer is the stratum basali where the cells are doing mitosis. Now these epidermal cells are attached to the connective tissue of the dermis by this pink line or basement membrane. Now, notice that the epidermis will actually dive down into the dermis and this little tube into the dermis creates a structure known as a hair follicle. This whole structure is known as the hair follicle. This purple guy here is the hair. Now the part of the hair that's in the hair follicle that's underneath the skin is called the root, and the part of the follicle that's above the skin that you can see, or the part of the hair that's above the skin that you can see is called the shaft. So notice how the two layers of the epidermis that dive down into the dermis are the stratum basali and the stratum spinosum. These are the two layers of the epidermis that are actually actively growing. So together we call these the growth layer. These two layers make up the growth layer. In Latin we'd call that Latin we call that the stratum germivatum, or we'll also known call this layer the germinal matrix. Notice that down at the very bottom of the hair is the hair papilla, and coming into the hair papilla we have some nerve endings and we have some blood vessels, which makes this area very very rapid growth and very sensitive. Let's look at some other structures that are here in the dermis. Uh, in the upper layer or papillary layer of the dermis, we have some superficial nerve endings. Uh, these are called free nerve endings. These pick up sensations of like pain and tickling and light touch. We have a superficial pressure receptor. Uh, so this might pick up light touch um, and vibrations. And these are attached to nerves, which are eventually gonna lead back to the brain. Over here, we have a deeper pressure receptor. Uh, so if somebody grips you firmly, you might feel it uh, through this pressure receptor instead of one of the superficial ones up there. Now, this is down in the, in the reticular layer of the dermis, whereas some of those other guys were up in the papillary layer of the dermis. Also down here in the reticular layer of the dermis is an eccrine sweat gland, which will function to cool your body off by making a thin, watery sweat. And, uh, we have some nerves and blood vessels, which, which if you'll recall, are uh, involved in thermoregulation, keeping your body temperature at the right level. If we finish looking here uh, at the hair follicle, there are a couple of structures attached to the hair follicle. There is a sebaceous gland, which makes the oil that covers your skin known as sebum. And there's an erector pili muscle, or piloerector muscle, which when it's stimulated, it pulls your hair upward and causes your hair to stand on end, creating goosebumps. If you're a cat and you're scared, it'll make you look larger when all your hair stands on end as well. Okay, so that's a quick review of the skin. This is what I expect you to do for this culminating activity, for this part of the unit on skin, is to create something like this. It does not have to be uh, a chalk drawing. It could be on a whiteboard, it can be a computer, but it's something that you have to create. I don't want a picture that you just talk about. I want you to create something. Use your creativity and have fun. Thanks a lot. Bye.